To show that conjecture is true is really tricky. What we end up doing is we have to show th that the conjecture is true for all cases, which might be impossible if there are infinitely many cases, or we can use a process called proof by induction. This proof method is a much harder method than the uh, ways of proving that we'll look at in this course. It's usually for a much higher math course, an analysis course, which is typically a 300 level math course. So we'll focus on the way to prove conjectures as false, which is comparatively easier. To prove that conjecture is false, we just have to show that it's not true for one case. And this case that we use is called a counterexample. A counterexample is a specific case or example that shows a conjecture to be false. The easiest way to show this is just to jump into another example. So for example three, we want to provide a counterexample for the following conjectures. The first one is that all prime numbers are odd. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can think of a number that is prime and not odd. If we go through our set of prime numbers, we realize that the first prime number we come across, two, is a prime number, but is also an even number. Meaning two is our counterexample to the statement that all prime numbers are odd. In the next example, we have a, the quantity a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared. This statement is actually a common mistake that's made in many math courses. Go ahead, see if you can come up with a counterexample, one that shows the statement to be false. Pause the video and resume when you're ready. The easiest way to show equations are false is to find values a and b that we can plug in and show the two sides are not equal to one another. Let's pick 2 for a and 3 for b. All right, plugging these values in, we get 2 plus 3 squared equals 2 squared plus 3 squared. Order of operations tells us that on the left hand side we deal with parentheses first, meaning we have 5 squared. Then on the right hand side we get 2 squared which is 4 and 3 squared which is 9. 5 squared is 25, <coughs> 4 plus 9 is 13. We can see that 25 does not equal 13. Our counterexample is a equal to 2 and b equal to 3. Because when we plug those values in, the statement is no longer true. How about our next example? If the product of two prime numbers is positive, then the two numbers must both, both be positive. So this statement is saying that if I have a number times another number, then their product, c, if c is positive, then a and b are both positive. Take a moment, try to come up with a counterexample. The counterexample I thought of is when a is negative 2 and b is negative 4, a times b equals negative 2 times negative 4, which equals a positive 8. In this case, our product is positive, but both a and b are negative, meaning our counterexample is that negative 2 times negative 4 equals a positive 8. This example shows that the original conjecture is false. It is not always the case that if we have a positive number formed from the product of two numbers, that those two numbers must both be positive. They can, in fact, be negative. 